Hi guys, it's Sean. Welcome to Sean Vibes. I am so glad to have you here. So I uh, want to do a pick a card reading with you today around what kind of guy is looking for you? We're going to answer several questions today about this person, but first you guys need to pick your reading. If you're new to pick a card videos, here's how it works. Each one of these piles corresponds with a number, uh, timestamps actually, that I'm going to put below this video. You will click on the timestamp to get your specific reading. These are general readings for the collective. Keep that in mind. So what you're going to want to do is take what uh, hits home for you and then leave the rest behind for someone else who needs it. There could be messages for you in more than one pile because there may be more than one person that's looking out for someone like you. So if you feel drawn to more than one of these piles, feel free to listen to more than one of these readings. Okay. So to guide you in today, we have first the Rose Quartz with this lavender pile of cards. We have amethyst with this aqua pile of cards. And we have moonstone with this turquoise pile of cards. So see which one of these piles, and again, there may be more than one pile, is uh, calling to you right now. I'm going to uh, be silent so that you can take a second and take a look and let your intuition guide you. You can also choose based on which crystal you like best or which color uh, top card you like best. And I will see you guys in your readings. Hi, group one. So I am going to be answering six questions about the guy that is looking for you. And I'm going to use uh, several different decks in order to do that. So this is the pile preparation for your reading. If you want to skip this part and go right down to where I start to, inter to interpret the cards, you can, of course, feel free to do that. The timestamp for that is below as well. So the first set of questions that we are going to ask are his personality type. We're going to ask about his career and finances, and we're also going to ask about his relationship with his family. So starting with personality type, what kind of personality does the guy looking for members of group one have? What kind of personality does he have? Wonderful. Oh. Goodness. All right. Since we've already seen it, I'll just go ahead and leave it like that. All right. And then uh, what uh, do his finances look like? What career is he in? His career and finances. Can we get some information around that, please? Career and finances. Thank you. Career and finances for the guy looking for members of group one. Career and finances about this uh, of this guy, please. What does his, there we go, thank you. All right. And finally, like I said, we are going to be taking a look at his relationship with his family. What kind of relationship does the guy looking for group one have with his family? Oh, that one came right on out. And one more, please, around his family. Oh, thank you. All right. So that's the start of our reading. We're also going to take a look at what kind of a um, first date he might suggest for you. So let's find out what kind of first date will the guy looking for group one suggest? Oh, I like that. So I'd almost try to fly straight on out. What kind of first date? Oh, another one said me. Pick me. <laughs> what kind of first date? Well, the guy looking for members of group one. Oh, and that one too. All right. That was very, it was a very amenable deck. <laughs> That's really, really cool. All right. The next thing that we are going to find out about today is the character trait that he brings out in you. Now, this might be a character trait that you already have, but um, being involved with him amplifies it or magnifies it, or it could be a character trait that you have not 
um, had before, but it develops as a result of the relationship you two have together. Uh, what character trait will the guy looking for members of group one? Oh, I see. Bring out in them. Great. Finally, not finally, sorry, we actually have a couple more. Um, next, we're looking at when you guys will meet. When will the guy looking for a group one meet them? When will group one meet this guy that's looking for them? Oh, 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 there you are. Okay. Next, we're going to take a look at the energy between you. What's the vibe between you and the guy that's looking for you? What is the energy between group one and the guy that's looking for them? Lovely. And now, finally, his divine masculine influences. Can we have some information around his divine masculine influences? These may be... Um, so it may be that he is aware that these uh, divine gods and entities are influencing him, or he might just happen to have similar qualities to what they represent. Okay, so let us begin your interpretation. This is uh, a lot of cards. <laughs> so this reading is probably going to be a little bit longer than my pick of cards normally are. Uh, but stick with me because with all of these questions that we've asked, we are going to get so much detail for you. So starting with his personality type and then we saw queen of swords first let me put you up there a little uh sorry not am this rose quartz so we saw queen of swords first along with the eight of swords they were together all right so personality type on your guy or the guy that's looking for you is uh i think quite impressive from what i see here he's one of those people who has experienced a lot in life. He hasn't had a sheltered life, right? He might be that person who went to um, as many as, you know, six to eight schools growing up as opposed to just one. Or if he was in the, or not, sorry, not one, nobody goes to one school, but as opposed to just like an elementary school, a middle school, a high school, he uh, may have had to move around a lot. I'm getting a sense that there might've been a lot of movement because of his father's job, his father or mother's job that they uh, might have been in the military and that created the need for all of this moving around. Um, there are also instances where someone has to um, have a lot of experiences young in life because they move around for not as positive reasons. Like if they happen to be in the foster care system and they move from um, one uh, residence to another uh, as a part of that. But what I am getting here that is overwhelmingly, I think, beneficial about the guy that's looking for you is whatever it is that made it so that he has had so many experiences in life, he has... Um, a very, very strong mind. He has a lot, he's been exposed to a lot of culture, a lot of uh, different uh, ways of thinking, philosophies, uh, different uh, actual cultures as in ethnic cultures, whether it's just that he researched them on his own or he's had the opportunity to visit different places. Um, and because of this, he's one of those people that is very patient, very tolerant, um, with others, that is. And, um, and it's because he understands that he, he has the sense of, I don't know if you know the phrase cultural relativity, but he has the understanding that everyone is who they are because it's just who they are. He's not one of those people that has the mindset that there is a right way you have to be, right? Or if you don't do these things, uh, you are somehow failing at life or anything like that. He, he knows that people are the sum of their experiences. And then getting back to the cultural relativity that I mentioned, um, I feel that he also very strongly believes that 
people's uh, way of being is the direct result of the environment in which they grew or, or were raised. And, um, and that each different culture, each different kind of environment has its own value. Um, there is no sense of his thinking that, you know, Western culture is better than Eastern culture or, uh, you know, anything like that at all. He just, he's got a very open mind. Um, and, and with that, he's got very, very great discernment because he, um, is able to take things as they are and take people as they are. He takes in more information than someone who is closed minded, right? And so since he has such an open mind, he is able to assess situations and people with more objectivity, uh, circumspection and good judgment than many people often can. Another benefit of his being so, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, so discerning, as I said before. Another benefit to that is, um, you know, he he takes his time in making decisions. He weighs out the good and bad of situations before taking action on anything. And then at the same time, he doesn't uh, struggle with thoughts that will restrict or hold him down very long. I'm not saying they never come. I'm saying that they don't defeat him and they don't tie him up for long. His good judgment cuts through the bullshit really fast, right? Um, and the outside influences from others who might want to bring him down, he fights those back, knocks them, you know, because he can't, it's almost like he can't be fooled. Um, I feel like that statement may imply a little bit more than I mean. So let me, let me pare that down a little bit. It's along the lines of he has a sense of his, uh, he has confidence in whatever, uh, belief or, or assessment. Assessment is the better word. He has confidence in uh, whatever assessment he makes of a situation, uh, particularly when it pertains to himself, his own life, his goals, his desires, his dreams, um, his hopes, uh, his plans, any of those things. And so because he's got that, he other people can't detract him. Other people can't talk him out of, um, I'm not saying he's not open to other people's viewpoints. It's just that if someone is trying to tear him down, right? If someone is trying to uh, convince him he can't do something or he is less than something or anything like that, he just doesn't struggle with self-doubt and it can't be pricked by other people. That's what I was trying to get at. And that's even if he happened to uh, have a challenging childhood uh, where he might have, um, you know, had to face and overcome some difficulties, it grew him into the man he is today that has this really good discernment and he trusts his own judgment. Um, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so next we are going to be taking a look at his career and finances. So we have the Ten of Swords, but we also have the Ten of Cups, we have the Queen of Wands, and we have the Page of Wands. So not surprisingly, what I'm getting here is he works in a field that brings him a lot of joy, brings him a lot of happiness. Um, it is connected to his own uh, um, inspiration, belief systems, vision. Uh, it's connected, like for him, it may not actually be soul work in terms of... Um, you know, reading tarot cards or being a psychic or even spirit work or religious work or anything like that. But it is very much tied to what he believes about uh, life and the contribution that he wants to make to the world. I am definitely getting a sense of that. He is working in a field where he feels as though he is on purpose. He it has a sense of his purpose. He tried the thing where he worked a different kind of job before. Uh, in I'm getting a more traditional sense, possibly at a bank, possibly in law. Uh, but that was a betrayal of who he really is and what he really felt that he could. Um, contribute to society, contribute to a workplace, contribute even just to his life. There's very much a, a calling. The ca a calling is an aspect of um, 
his career, that it's not just something to do, but it's something he believes in. So with that in mind, he might work at a nonprofit. I'm getting very strong nonprofit vibes. He might work in education. He, uh, might work with children. He might, um, oh, I'm getting something around maybe social services. Maybe, um, he works in a way that helps families rebuild after hard times. Uh, by that, that token, he might work for a company like, uh, or I don't know if it's considered a company, but an organization like uh, Habitat for Humanity or something like that, where they're building homes. I am definitely getting a sense of helping the underserved or, or helping to better society. Whatever kind of work he does, whether it is on the social, in the social sphere, um, having to do with or being a nonprofit, or it's something like working at a company that's very, very innovative. Like, you know, when Apple before, like Apple is ubiquitous with life now, right? But it didn't, it wasn't always. And a lot of what drove Steve Jobs was the idea that he had a vision of what he wanted to contribute to society. And he happened to do it in a commercial way and make a lot of money and, and, and a lot of money for other people too in the process. So that is also a possibility for the guy that's looking for you. But whether he is working in a commercial commercial field or he's working in a nonprofit, I am definitely getting um, that it is connected to vision for him, uh, personal purpose, that he feels very much like he's on the right track. And the good news about that for you is that he is very secure in uh, the kind of work he's doing. There isn't any conflict inside of him around that. He's already done that, right? He already did the whole, this isn't what I'm supposed to do with my life thing. So by the time you meet him, when he comes to you, he will be somebody who is, or he is actually, I'm getting already that he has become this already. Um, someone who is at home and at peace in the work that he's doing and on fire for it, right? Because with wands, we have the fire sign or the fire fire energy. Um, so I'm getting very much that there's love and passion for the work that he does. It brings him much joy. And I do feel strongly that it's connected to his helping to bring joy uh, to others uh, in a sense of their place. I'm getting the word place keeps coming up. Um, so something around... You know, knowing that the work that he does matters, the work that he is doing matters to other people and makes a difference. Now, I will say we do have a very noticeable absence of pentacles cards, which is uh, the money card, traditionally speaking. Uh, that also leads me to believe that he is probably working in a nonprofit or educational setting, okay? Somewhere where it doesn't come with a huge price tag. Let me say that better, a huge salary. So just, you know, know that that is a uh, part of the package of this already pretty amazing man that is uh, looking for you. Okay, now we're going to take a look at his relationship with his family members. Look at that. Wow. So again, I feel it's like all of this is very much in alignment. Um, I'm getting that he comes from a family where thought is is highly um, valued. Let me say that better. Uh, new thought, innovative thought is highly valued. The shifting of um, mindsets from the negative to the pro uh, positive is very, very much valued. Uh, the shifting of perspectives. His mom and or dad may work in the same kind of field that he works in, uh, where it's about bettering other people's lives or a similar field, an adjacent field. I'm getting that uh, there is a shared... Um, uh, how do I put it? Uh, a shared sense of purpose in knowing the value of positive thinking, innovative thinking, recharge thinking, changing perspectives from those which are not uh, serving you to perspectives that can better serve you. And I'm also getting a sense of um, with his family as well, you know, um, being at peace with how they live, right? Um, and so with, I'm, I'm getting a sense of, um, you know, like, let me see if I can think of a great example. Okay. 
Many of you may not know this reference, but there was a um, TV show a hundred years ago, this like even before my time, called the um, Partridge Family. And it was about this family group, uh, a family that had a band, you know, and they played music together as well as lived together, of course, right? And that's the word, okay. So I couldn't think of the word I needed. I could just think of the, the Partridge Family just kept coming up for me, but now I get it. The word I was looking for is harmonious. I'm getting the sense that his relationship with his family is harmonious because there is a shared uh, value system there and a shared um, approach to life. This The viewpoint of making the best of what comes along, the viewpoint of you know when something doesn't seem to be working, how can you shift your thoughts to uh, making it work for you better? There's a lot of respect in this family I'm getting. Uh, respect from his parents to him and vice versa. I'm getting the sense that he's probably an only child. I'm not feeling like there are siblings there. Or if there are siblings, they're significantly older. He might be, um, he may have been born later in his parents' lives. He might have been a surprise baby. Uh, because I'm definitely getting the, the feeling of three people in this family, a unit of three. And there being, among them, the sense of harmony that I mentioned, as well as like going in the same direction, sharing perspectives. Um, and those perspectives are around being able to entertain new ways of thinking. They get very excited about new ideas. I'm getting that they, you know, I'm getting readers. Uh, these are possibly very intellectual people who have very smart conversations uh, around current events. Um, you know, sometimes I tend to personally find this a little bit odd personally, but um, you know, sometimes you'll hear somebody refer to their child as their best friend, like they're like a parent who refers to their child as their best friend. I'm getting a similar kind of vibe here. I'm not saying that, um, and I'm getting it from the mother. Okay. So I'm not saying that she definitely uses that kind of language or that she definitely thinks of him as her best friend, but I am definitely getting this sense of a, a, a respect for her son, for the adult that he is. And he definitely definitely has a respect for his mother, for who she is as a woman, as well as for his father. Okay, so the next thing we are going to take a look at is possible first date suggestions that he might make. This is, uh, actually, let me make a little bit more space here. Oh, boy. Lots of info, lots of info. All right, so now that we have a little bit more room, and I might have to do that again in a few minutes, guys, just to give you a heads up. All right, so possible first dates. We have the Four of Pentacles. We have the Five of Cups. We have the Chariot. And we have the Five of Pentacles. Very, very interesting. Okay, so um, you guys, find the sweetness in what I'm about to tell you if you can. I am uh, getting the sense that while he is able to support himself, um, he doesn't have an abundance of money, okay? We saw already in the career and finances row that there was the absence of pentacles. And we have two pentacles cards here, right? We have the five of pentacles, which is oftentimes considered the uh, financial scarcity card. And then we have the four of pentacles, which can sometimes mean financial security, but sometimes can mean uh, fear around money, fear of losing money. Now, I am not getting the sense that he has a fear around money because we have clearly here with the Period. He does have the ability to stand on his own two feet and to stand uh, uh, to take care of himself. But uh, we also have five of cups here. So I am getting the sense that uh, there's a little bit of regret in him for how he is going to possibly start his courtship with you. OK, there isn't a lot of money there for him to spend on something fancy. And the only reason why that it's um, that is causing him any regret is because he feels that you're the person that deserves that kind of thing. If he was the guy who had a lot of cash to flash, he would flash it on, uh, not on you or at you. How would I say that? I don't know, but you get what I'm trying to say, right? He has much, um, he holds you in very, very high regard. Uh, however, the money is just not really there to be extravagant. That's not to say that he's going to skip skimp on things when it comes to you because since he does hold you in high regard he is going to want to um 
impress you. So the suggestions that he might make for a first date include maybe a picnic, maybe an outdoor concert that might be free to a pub to the public. Uh, you might get something like an invitation to a museum because museum tickets are not that expensive. I am getting very much this. Oh, he might offer to cook dinner for you. I'm very much getting the sense around it being something that um, will be inexpensive but sweet okay so keep in mind if 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 this doesn't come up because usually on first dates people don't talk about their earning so when he um makes the suggestion of the first date if it seems unimpressive at first it is probably because he's going to want to make sure he always has some funds to take you out for a while right he doesn't want to blow the whole wad on the first friday night you guys go out together and then not be able to take you out the next friday night because there's there's no more discretionary funds. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm getting for also that um, for some of you, yeah, for some of you, you, you might forget that we've had this conversation and he might be able to sense that you don't like the suggestion or maybe you agree to it right up front and then you guys go on the date and you kind of like turn up your nose at, you know, the the place that he comes up with to take you or what you guys end up doing. And that can cause him a little bit of regret, right? Um but given the personality type that he is, he's not going to stay down for long. He will be resilient. So just know if you feel any weirdness around him, uh, sorry, any weirdness coming from him around that during that first date or shortly thereafter, it could, uh, it, it could actually be a reflection, um, or a mirroring back of what he might be picking up on from you. Now, let me give you a caveat because this reading today is the kind of guy that's looking for you. If you happen to be someone who you have the requirement that a guy spends a lot of money on you, particularly in the courtship stage, then just because he's looking for you doesn't mean you have to be with him, okay? So if there's a different uh, kind of financial situation that you're looking for, you don't have to go out with this guy or you don't have to go out with him a second or third time. So just keep that in mind. It is all you guys, whenever you get readings from me or anybody else, you always have free will. So don't take this reading to me. Oh man, I'm stuck with a brokey. No, you're not stuck with anybody. Okay. Everybody and everything is optional. Uh, the next thing we are going to look at is the character trait that he brings out in you. Okay, so what we have here is the journey. Look at that, the journey came up. So I'm getting with this particular card that uh, for all of you, the message here is around growth. There is going to be growth for you as a result of this relationship. Some people consider uh, those kinds of relationships to be like karmic bonds or, uh, you know, some people say soul uh, relationships or soul mates or, you know, whatever you're phrasing around it is. Um, there is or, or just, you know, associations that help bring healing or grow, again, growth. It doesn't have to be healing from something in your past. It could just be growing you up from one stage of your life in regards to romance or interpersonal relationships to another. Right. So I'm getting that uh, for most of you, there is an element of that. For some of you, I'm also getting that there will be actual journeys as part of this relationship. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, right, or or like the direct opposite of what I just said about his needing to be careful with money on your first date. So these trips may be something that you're fitting the bill for. They may be, he may come from a family that does family trips every year. And so uh, they extend the invitation to you guys as well, knowing full well that they will probably fit the bill uh, for those journeys. It could also be that uh, traveling for work is part of his job and it could be that you guys get to you get to join him on some of these journeys uh, but we do have a vehicle here so I am very much getting the sense that for uh, several of you there might be actual travel that and, and and the character trait that it would bring out for you is a love of traveling right a love of um adventure maybe you haven't had a chance to uh see different places very much um 
yeah, I'm very much getting the sense that it's probably tied to his work. The kind of work he does may make him need to go different places. And uh, maybe he invites you to come along too because of the fact that uh, he can for whatever reason. And it, it opens up a new world for you uh, where you get to develop some of this cultural relativity that he uh, comes to with to begin with. Um but definitely growth. I'm getting to, uh, there's going to be some maturing for many of you with this relationship. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is when you will meet. What we got for that is new moon in Virgo. So, uh, it's going to be during a Virgo season, possibly during a new moon. And uh, Virgo season, for those of you who are not super familiar with that, is August, mid, uh, sorry, late August to late September. I think that most um, most sources uh, consider it August 23rd to September 23rd. I think something like that, maybe 22nd. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the end of August to, towards the end of September is the time frame. I don't have a sense of year for you, but given that at the time this video goes up, it is only March of 2023. There is the possibility that that's going to happen this Virgo season. Okay. So look out for that. The next thing that we are going to take a look at is the energy between you. I'm very excited about this. So what we have here is dreams. Dreams are where your mind translates the divine. That's what you have. So what I'm getting from that is the sense, and that really fits with what I said earlier about like this relationship possibly being a relationship of growth for you guys, or not possibly, it's definitely going to grow you. It's going to grow you. And I said something around how it might be like how some people consider karmic relationships. Um, but what I'm getting here is you, it's like, if you have the idea of the man of your dreams, He's going to embody that for you and vice versa. His idea of the female of his dreams, you will be embodying that for him, right? Uh, and this is possibly why despite being very confident in himself, his life choices, the way he looks at life, the way he lives life, and everything that we saw at the beginning of this reading, when it comes down to what he's able to do for your first date, he does experience some regret. Usually he doesn't think poorly of himself, but he does think very, very highly of you and of course course, uh, with you being the woman of his dreams, wants to, particularly in the beginning, really impress you. So um, yeah, what we have here is you guys are going to feel as though you are what the other has been looking for. Okay. And now if for some of you, it may be that you don't realize it at first, because you know sometimes we have an idea of what we think we want in a relationship. Um, and then we meet someone who turns out not to be that at all, but they're exactly what we actually needed and should have wanted. Uh, so for some of you, it may look like that. For others of you, it may be instant recognition. Uh, particularly for those of you who are getting, you know, going to have a lot of growth in this relationship, your idea of what the person of your dreams uh, looks like, feels like, is probably going to, to shift um, into who this person is. So it might be that in the beginning, you're just kind of like, yeah, dude, whatever. Sure. I'll take your free meal. And, <laughs> and then it turns out that you actually develop some very deep, very lasting feelings for him. And then finally, you guys, what I have for you. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so in terms of divine masculine influences for him. We have King Neptune with the keyword of sensitivity. And what I'm getting from this, which totally jives with what we've talked about, particularly around his career, is um, I think you have a very empathic man that's looking for you, okay? Um, his sensitivity doesn't necessarily mean that he's like... Uh, <laughs> Some people might find this phrase derisive. I don't mean it to be, but like a walking womb. He's not just like going around crying over everything. You know, he doesn't binge eat to deal with his feelings. I'm not getting that sense at all, but he is that person who, like I said earlier, is aware of others and makes space in his thinking and in his heart and in his life for others and their reality. He is sensitive to things around him, sensitive to other people and their needs. And then ultimately is also 
aware of what he needs and how he feels, right? So he goes through life uh, receiving life. And because of what he receives, he is able to then give. Okay, group one, man, that is the longest one of these pick pickleball readings that I've ever done. And I still got two more to do. Uh, wish me luck, you guys. But listen, I'm very excited for you with what I see here and the guy that is looking for you. Keep your eyes out for him because he's waiting for you. You're the woman of his dreams, yo. All right, guys. Oh, as you might have noticed, I didn't have a lot of room to be silly and crazy and funny like I normally am in these videos because there's just so much going on. I will see you guys next time. You guys, I offer relationship readings on my Etsy shop. So if you have an interest in getting a love and relationship reading or a narcissistic relationship reading for any of you who have that situation going on in your life, please check out the links below. It'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, for the narcissistic relationship reading, if you use discount code NARC1, you will get 15% off your first order. Hi, group two. Welcome to your reading. So today we are going to answer six questions around the kind of guy that's looking for you. In order to do that, I am going to use several decks. So I'm about to begin at this part of the video. I will be uh, assembling your pile, pulling the cards for you. If you don't feel like watching that process, you can skip right to the interpretation of the cards. The timestamps for that will also be below. Um, but if you are interested in watching me pick the cards, the question that I am going to be asking for you today are these. Uh, we're going to look at the personality type of the guy that's looking for you. We're going to take a look at his career and finances. We are going to ask about his relationship with his family. We're also going to take a look at uh, a first date that he might suggest for the two of you guys to go on. We are going to look at the character trait that he brings out in you. Now, this might be a character trait that you already have, but it gets amplified in the relationship with him. Or it could be a character trait that uh, develops while you are involved with him that hasn't been there before. Uh, we're going to look at when you guys are going to meet, likely times, I should say, for you guys to meet one another. We're going to look at the energy between the two of you. So essentially, that's the dynamic of the relationship. And then finally, we're also going to look at his divine masculine influences, whether those are conscious or unconscious. So if you want to skip the pulling of the cards, feel free. But for those of you who are sticking around, I will begin now. Let's take a look at the personality type, please. Personality type of the guy who is looking for the members of group two. What personality type does he have? Thank you personality type for the members of group two, the guy looking for group two, personality type for the guy who is looking for the members of group two. May I have one more, please? Thank you. I see you sticking out there. All right. The career and finest is for the guy who is looking for group two. What does his career look like? How are his finances? Career and finances for the guy looking for group two. Ah, and this one wanted to come out too, so we'll take both. Actually, they came together, so we'll take those in the same position. Career and finances for the guy that is looking for group two. Very good. All right, so this is, let me scoot this a little bit. Make a little bit more space here. So we ended up with two in position three. Okay, let's take a look at the relationship between the guy who was looking for group two and his family. What's his relationship with his family look like? What's the relationship with his family look like? I see you. Thank you. What is the relationship with his family? I want to take this one too because it looked like that one wanted to come out as well. All right. So let me just make a little bit more space. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Sometimes I think I might need to get a bigger table. 
this is the uh, largest spread I have done since starting this channel. And when I do personal readings for people who come to me, I do them on my dining room table, which is much bigger. Okay, next we're going to take a look at possible first date suggestions. So, what suggestion for a first date might the guy looking for group two make? All right, so we have this one. First date suggestions the guy looking for group two might make. This one. What might he suggest for them to do for their first date? This one. May I have one more, please? First date suggestions. Where does he want to take? There we go. Them. All right. Next, we are going to... I, see, I keep like obsessively thinking I need to shift everything over left. Um, here we go. Okay, good. All right. So, where are we now? Character traits that he brings out in you, whether they are new or amplified. Character trait that the guy looking for group two brings out in them. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to put that right there for now. When you guys might meet. That's what we're looking at next. Can we get a sense, please, of when the guy who is looking for group two will show himself? Next, we're looking at the energy between you. What's the energy between? Oh, wow. Okay, you guys got two. So we are going to take both. Oh, actually, you know what? I think you got three. So we're going to take all three of those. This is going to be quite quite the reading. Okay. Um, and finally, the divine masculine influences. What are his divine masculine influences, please? I see. Thank you. All right. You guys, let's do this. We got this. So starting off with his personality type. We got the Four of Wands. We got the Four of Cups. We got, oh my God, the Four of Swords. I know y'all got, y'all see, y'all guys, I know y'all see what I see, right? Like so far you've got every single four and you got the Three of Pentacles. But look at this, even though this isn't the Four of Pentacles, you still have one of each suit. So immediately I get two things from this, okay? First of all, with the appearance of so much four energy, you have security. This is a person who is secure, all right? And also this I feel is amplified by the fact that we did get one of each suit. So by that, we have balance. Balance also tends to give security to people. So you have a secure, well-balanced person that is looking for you. That is your first, um, your first clue to who's out there searching, trying to find you. They uh, either have created for themselves already or come from a stable home life. They have uh, security in their way of going through life. They have a sense of when it's time to take action and when it's time to rest and relax. They are quite capable at uh, working with others because, again, there's this sense of... Uh, of balance between what is theirs to contribute to a situation or an endeavor, and then leaving space for other people to contribute as well. Um, and then we also have the one place where we might have a little bit less of a, a feeling around security is in the hopes and dreams, right? Um, I'm getting here that he may not give enough attention to um, what is possible for him because of his sense of security. It's like stability is possibly the most important thing to him. So I'm getting the sense right now, and we'll find out more as we go, but right off the bat, I'm getting the sense that this is not somebody who is super spontaneous, uh, but at the same time, what this means is this is not a risk taker, okay? They're focused on the here and now. They're focused on... Um, 
what is directly in front of them. And so they're not really that open to change, to things that are outside of the status quo of life as it currently is. This is not someone with big grand plans, but they may have a big 401k account or big IRA account, right? Because stability, security, uh, I'm getting comfort also. I'm getting, especially in, in terms of the home, these are things that are important to him. I'm getting that he, by nature, will provide uh, the person he ultimately ends up with. Maybe that'll be you. Maybe it won't be, depending on what you decide when you meet him. Um, but there is a sense of provider. I'm getting a sense of being someone who is not just a provider in terms of financial provision um, or material things, but Seeing it as uh, part of his responsibility to provide a a safe space uh, that may mean a safe physical space, like a safe home, but it also could mean just a safe, energetic, uh, psychological and emotional space. This is the kind of person who, you know, like sometimes girls will just put him in the friend zone because there isn't like the element of bad boy to him. There isn't that, uh, again, there's, there's no sense of risk or potential danger. And so a lot of times with guys like that, we tend to, uh, it doesn't necessarily always move us in our gut, right? And so because stability and excitement are two very different energies and the guy that tends to feel the way the guy who's looking for you feels, um, he might get friend zoned a lot. In fact, he might even be a friend that you already have. For some of you, I'm getting that maybe someone that you know is coming to mind right away when I started talking about him, right? Um but so I said all of that just to say I, I, for, I forgot to complete the point I was making, which is this is a person who, regardless of what's going on with you, you can bring it to him and there will be no judgment. There will be no, oh, you shouldn't feel that way. There will be no pushing you aside. He makes space, safe space for you to express whatever it is you're experiencing, wanting or needing. Um, so yeah, just Mr. Security, Mr. You know, dependable. And it's not just in regards to his, um, his romantic relationships. This is how he shows up for life. This is who he is in his work environment. This is who he is with his family. I'm getting that we'll know for certain when we get down to the family row, but I feel as though he's that person who, uh, he might be like the good son, um, in his family. But again, we'll find out more in just a little bit. Uh, but for whatever reason, whatever the, um, origin of his being this way might be definitely stability, security, comfort, harmony. These are the, uh, the attributes that are coming up for him. Okay. Taking a look at his career, we have two of pentacles. We have queen of cups. We got, oh, wow. 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 <laughs> queen of pentacles and seven of pentacles together. Y'all, this is a lot of pentacles. Um, <laughs> and you got the knight of swords. Look, did we get all three? No. Okay. I was going to say, did we get all four? Um, I actually almost said three, but I meant four. All four suits again, but we did not because pentacles took up two of our positions, right? So I'm getting here clearly that this is a person uh, for whom money is a thing, right? Like he is not hurting for cash. Um, getting that he probably has more than one source of income. I'm getting multiple streams of income. I'm also getting that some of them are seasonal or um, inconsistent. So it's not necessarily a situation where, you know, 52 or 50 weeks out of the year, he gets the same large paycheck every two weeks. Uh, I'm getting that he might actually be a writer um, or a developer of some sort. And so he makes his money on an as needed basis. I'm getting uh, the sense of it being contractual, contract 
actual work that he does. So again, if he is a writer, it could be that his pay is tied to say he uh, writes for like a publication or some kind of a news outlet that his pay is tied to uh, per story or per article. If he is a novelist, he is a successful novelist. And uh, in that case, it would be the money comes, you know, whenever there's a new book. Um I am not getting the sense here that he is a self-published person or that he uh, does whatever kind of work he does on his own. I'm definitely getting that it is tied to one or more institutions, major institutions. So when the money does come, it comes in a it, it comes from a check that, you know, is going to clear. Right. There's no and he never has to like chase his money uh, the way some people who work in artistic fields do. Like uh, there have been times when I've worked on films and I've had to like go after people for my damn money. And I don't like doing that. Right. Uh, and But I don't get the sense that that's where he functions. If that was ever a part of his experience and the work that he does, he has advanced beyond that. I'm getting that he is very established in the work that he does. He does have financial security from money he has already earned from these multiple streams as well as investments he's made with those monies and I definitely definitely am getting the sense that uh, communication uh, I don't feel like it's um uh, how do I put it um I'm getting, let me finish the first thought and, and then see if the second thought is even still relevant I'm getting the sense that communication uh, uh, um, uh what's the word I'm looking for Oy, oy, oy. Okay, so you know how when you write, there's, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's like fiction writing and there's nonfiction writing, right? There's creative writing and then there's business writing, that kind of thing. I'm getting that the kind of work that he does is connected to that which he conceptualizes or creates. So it's not just reporting of facts or reporting of news. Um, if he writes for a publication, there is opinion that's part of the work that he does. If he works as an author, it is something that he creates as opposed to just a retelling of something that already happened happened. Um, so for instance, if he were to write about crime, right, he wouldn't be writing true crime. He'd be writing a suspense thriller. That kind, that's the distinction. I'm not saying that's exactly the work that he does. Uh, but I do get very, I, I feel I'm getting that, uh, ideas that the work he does is, the uh, manifestation of his ideas. The work that he does is his ideas in action. Um, and, and it's not just from the standpoint of what he's thinking, but also what he's feeling. I get that he uses his intuition in his writing as well. There's not really as much place for that in fiction, uh, sorry, in nonfiction writing or journalistic writing, any kind of reporting. Um, but whichever, whatever kind of work that he does that utilizes both his intuition, his heart and his mind, the ideas that he has, it is very, very fruitful for him. And I'm also getting that it gives him quite a bit of freedom. So it's not one of those situations, again, um, when the checks come, they clear, they are checks from big institutions, but they are not uh, systematic checks. Uh, let me say it better. They are not, you know, scheduled checks that he gets every two weeks or something like that. It's definitely tied to the work being done at the time or the work most recently done. Uh, it's contract by contract by contract. And he's just, he's done, he's gotten lots of good contracts. He's gotten great contracts and he has done really well with the money that he's gotten from those contracts. Okay. Uh, taking a look at his relationship with his family, we have King of Wands, we have Knight of Cups, and then we've got, wow, geez, this guy. My God. And then we got, um, sorry, we got King of Cups and the Hermit in the same position. Now, in case you guys are going, but Sean, you picked four, you had four positions in the first two rows, but only three here. Shouldn't these two be separate? No, because in this row that I'm doing for a family, it's actually three cards. Uh, most of you probably aren't thinking about that at all, but just in case there's that person out there that's going, wait a minute, Sean, did you do that wrong? No, honey, I didn't. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Okay. So what we have here is a lot 
of uh, cup energy, right? Because we don't just have Knight of Cups, but we also have King of Cups. So this is a very loving family. Uh, there's a lot of love and acceptance of each other in this family. We also have the King of Wands. So first of all, can we just, you know, talk about the fact that there's three court cards here and a major arcana. Uh, we have people, people, people. And, <laughs> and so this is a family that's very boisterous. Uh, they may celebrate like everything. They may celebrate a lot. And um, what I'm about to say might sound a little stereotypical. And I hope I don't offend anybody with this example. But what comes to mind for me is like, if you think about like, um, Ireland. Okay. <laughs> Think about like Ireland and like the family that owns like the local pub and, you know, th this family like makes music together and they, you know, they serve their neighbors who come to the pub together and they like, of course, there might be times where they don't get along, but there's this, this undercurrent of love and every member of the family knows that they belong no matter who or what uh, who they are or, or, you know, what they're like, uh, personality wise. And I'm getting that that's the kind of family that the guy who's looking for you comes from. It is a boisterous, passionate, loving family, even when a member of that family happens to be introverted, which I think your guy, the guy who is looking for you probably is. He may be the lone introvert in your, in his family. Okay. Um, which doesn't surprise me given that the, you know, the sense I got from his career in finances row is that he writes. So going off on his own may, oh, and this, you know, I feel like we also have some, um, indications towards introversion in his four of cups card as well right um but he comes from a loving family we also saw that indicated here with the four of wands in the personality card uh personality wrote earlier he comes from a loving family and he is accepted in that family for who and how he is and it's not like he just goes off by himself and they're just like oh well that's just like let's say his name is uh what's the name that's easy to I don't know. I've overthought it already. I was going to say John, but I was like, John is such a boring name. Uh, no offense to anybody who loves somebody named John or you may be named John, but um, <laughs> uh, let's just call him. Like, why can't I think of a name? I've been alive for a kajillion years. I should be able to think of a name. So anyway, his family's like, oh, that's just John. Let him go off and be by himself. And no, 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 it's not like that at all. Like they have the ability to coax him into being a part of the festivities. And it's not even that they always have to coax him. Sometimes he's just there because he loves his family as much as they love him. He's, you know, he likes the celebrations too. But he's not the one that's stepping up in front of like the group if they're like, if the family's entertaining or having some kind of party. He's not the one that's like playing um, instruments or singing a song or telling stories, holding court, that kind of thing. Uh, he's there. His presence is there and appreciated. He's enjoying himself. He is more the receiver in that party than he is the giver, if that makes sense at all. So I feel like there is... um there is an introverted nature here, but very much an acceptance of him as he is in this very boisterous, very loving family. And he too accepts them. I don't, I'm not getting a sense at all around he wishes they were different and like, why are they so loud? And you know, why do they have to make such a big deal out of every situation? No, he's not like that at all. And they're not like, God, he's such a stick in the mud at all all. There is much love in this family, which is probably why he's been able to accomplish so much in his life and is definitely why he's such a stable individual. Okay. All right. So next we're going to take a look at um, possible first dates he might suggest for you guys to go on together. So <clears throat> I hear my voice is starting to crack. This is the most talking I've done in a very long time. Okay, um, so I've made some room here so we can add some more cards. We have the Strength card. We have the Ace of Pentacles. We have the King of Cups. And we have the Two of Pentacles. So again, we have more... Oh, wait, he's gotten two of pentacles twice in this reading. That's come up twice in this reading. Um, and I was going to say right before I had that exciting little moment, uh, pentacles is, is, 
you know, throughout this reading, he might come from, you guys, he might come from, um, there might be family wealth there. This just, this just, you know, I just heard, yeah, with the stability that we have in him and the ability to do the things he's had to do, he might have come from, oh shoot, and we got King of Cups again too. Look at that. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So what I have here is that for your first date, he, he might invite you to something where he really, really gets to show off. All right. Now for some of you, some of you, how do I put this? Um, allow that. Allow that. Uh, I just, I got this like hit about, okay, so let me see if I can put it. How can I put it? All right. Um, don't be turned off by that. Okay. Uh, don't see it as his like showing off or trying to, eh, don't take it as like an indication of his being arrogant or shallow or just money focused. The reality is he has. And so because he has, he can utilize. And that's what he's going to want to do for your first date. He's going to want to pull out all the stops. So he might invite you to a fancy restaurant that's hard to get into, particularly if you're living in like a metropolis, like a Los Angeles or New York, uh, Paris, um, you know, any place that's, got those kinds of restaurants where you have to make a reservation to get into he he might he might suggest something like that to you i'm also getting the sense that he might not tell you ahead of time because of wanting to um impress you he's definitely going to want to impress you with this first date okay there is a sense here around really wanting to come out hard come out swinging with like this is it's, gosh, I feel like it's going to sound so much more arrogant than than I mean it to. Maybe if I say it with a sweet voice. Let me see. Let me see if I can do that. Um, this is okay. That's just weird. Never mind. Um, <laughs> um, what I'm getting at, you guys, is that there he's going to want to impress you. That's you know, he's going to want to impress you. He might. Uh, send you flowers ahead of time. He might do some kind of a fancy ask for the first date in the first place. Uh, some of this is because he has the ability to do these things. Some of uh, financial ability, I mean. Some of it is because he is a creative thinker and he's also very in touch with his emotions. So he doesn't mind putting himself out there, right? Uh, you know, some guys try to like play it cool or try to be aloof when you first meet them because they don't want to show what they're feeling or or have their heart on their sleeves or whatever he's not like that okay and then on top of that he does have the ability to show you a really good time i'm getting the sense that uh he's going to want to surprise you with this day that's what i'm getting for the majority of you i am hearing that for some of you there might be a asking in the form of like an interview so if you guys talk on the phone for a while before you go on your first date or something like that or <clears throat> Your initial conversation wherever you meet, he might ask you a bunch of questions that feel like he's being like he's interviewing you. Uh, sometimes, like for me, when someone does that, sometimes it can feel like it, a little intrusive. Like, why are you asking me so many questions? Right. Just know that if he does that, it's because he's trying to learn more about you so that he can plan the perfect first date for you. But know that for that first date, he is going to uh, want it to be as close to perfect as he can make it. So again, I'm getting a very nice restaurant. Um, I'm getting, you know, uh, there's going to be a surprise element to it. So if the place itself is not a surprise, some aspect of the night is going to be a surprise that he presents to you. Uh, if he brings you flowers, do not be surprised. Um, it's definitely going to be a place where you guys can have some alone time where it can feel, uh, and let me say this better because I do want everybody to be safe. I'm not 
sing off alone in like the woods with this guy you've never met before kind of alone time. I'm saying like if it's a restaurant, it might be a darkly lit um, restaurant that's very romantic in nature where you guys can have that sense of that feeling of intimacy. I'm definitely getting that. Um there may, there are going to be multiple aspects to this date. So it's not going to be just a, oh, we went out to dinner. It's he, he's, there's going to be a plan. Okay. He's going to have a plan of the two, maybe three things that he wants you to do for the night. So it may be, uh, it, it, I said night, but you know what? It may actually be like a full day. It could actually be, um, or, or, you know, early evening into the night, uh, because of the multi-level <laughs> aspect of the plans that it, there will be an itinerary. That's what I'm getting at. You guys, I love this guy. Um, yeah, he, it just, it's, I feel like fun is going to be an element of it, but not like fun as an, oh, we're going to go, you know, jump off a cliff into a lagoon. If that's a thing people do, I, I, I come up with the worst examples. <laughs> all the time but like going from something like white water rafting that's a better example it's not like fun like that and then uh a place where you're going to be super intimate no the fun of it is going to be that he's got so many uh things two to three maybe even four things planned for y'all all with you in mind uh and i'm getting definitely a sense of, about it being around what his what your interests are what he has found out from you your interests are so you have a combination going on here with this first date of his showing you what he can do because he's got the means for it and he takes the time to make the plans and then also you're an element of it in that he is going to find out from you what he can uh without spoiling the surprise um and planning a date that that really you know so uh, that that he hopes will make you happy that it, he's going to try to make you like him basically is what it comes down to right okay next we're looking at the oh wow the character trait that he's going to bring out in you is gentleness gentleness so what I'm getting here is that uh, because he is so capable as a human, but also financially capable, you won't have to do so much. So I'm all for female independence. I'm a super independent female myself, but there is an aspect of that for many of us that it was thrust upon us because of not having well, been well cared for either by our parents or, uh, you know, growing up or by people who we've loved in the past. And there's very much, um, a yang energy to us. That's the action oriented energy, the masculine energy of doing. You know, I've heard some women talk about, and I used to say this too, uh, back when I was in my twenties that I was tired of being the man because I had learned from my experiences to have to, to like try to make the relationship work. And, and uh, needless to say those damn relationships didn't work out right but um so i'm getting that for you guys the the character trait that's going to be uh amplified in your association with this person is or the guy who's looking for you is going to be gentleness getting to be in your divine feminine getting to be in receiving mode not having to do so much whether it's about doing so much to get the relationship going or keep it going or make it work or it's around doing so much just like in your home like he might if you guys get to the point where you're like you know serious about each other or at least seeing each other a lot he might be like hey i noticed this door jam is like you know this door is hanging off the door jam and, and he fixes it for you or he hires someone to fix it for you that and you don't have to do that thing yourself um i'm also getting the sense of because his energy as is how it is um that it might bring out for you some gentleness in that everything doesn't have to be big and flashy all the time you may have um that as your nature 
naturally to be redundant that you're you know very aggressive very powerful but because of his being a little more a lot more actually introverted than that some of the suggestions that he makes for you guys to do together or, or maybe the rhythm that develops naturally between you could be more on the quiet side like quiet nights together at home versus um constantly going out to the next big event or the latest movie or hanging out at clubs or bars or anything like that. But I'm definitely getting the sense that this gentleness here refers to your being well cared for. That uh, the guy who is looking for you is ready to care for you. And we talked about this some in that first row when we did the, uh, the row around his personality type and the fact that he brings with him stability, that he is a stable person. Um, so gentleness is going to be amplified for you in this relationship. For some of you, you're already gentle people. And so um, you're just going to be able to sink into that even more, you know, because he does his part and he um, and he also sees you as precious. And so because he sees you as precious, he takes care of you and cares for you as though you are a precious jewel. He is gentle with you and that allows you to be uh, in your own state of gentleness. You don't ever feel, I feel like you never have to feel like you have to yell at him, you know, force things with him. I feel like this is a scenario where you can, you know, if there's something that you need to address that you can just, you can do it in like your normal voice and you will be heard. I have, the sense that I'm getting is that you won't ever feel like you have to make anything be. That you can let things be. Okay. All right. In terms of when you guys might meet, I have new moon in Pisces. So uh, Pisces is February through March. So this means, guys, that... Um, it's not going to be this year because by because uh, Pisces is February was it February nineteenth through March twentieth and so uh, oh actually no let me rephrase that because this is going up this video is going up on Saturday the eighteenth so you might meet him this weekend or Monday all right uh, there is there are three more days in Pisces season where you might meet him that's very interesting um, but if or 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 if he's someone that you've you already know he might ask you out in those three days, sometime during those three days. If, uh, if that does not happen, then we're looking at next year. Okay. Don't let that make you too upset. I know that, you know, um, sometimes we want love to come and come yesterday, but sometimes we need to wait for things so that we can be ready for them. And also so that other person can be ready for us. Right. Okay. In terms of, um, uh, the energy between you, we have, so with these readings tonight, I've, I've, the intention has been for me to pick one card to represent the energy, but you guys got three. So even before I read what's on any of these cards, the first thing that tells me is that it's a dynamic energy, all right? There's a lot of energy in this relationship. So we have oneness, you are part of the universe and always will be. We got self-love, you can only love others as much as you love yourself. Interesting. I've already got something that's like come up for me with those two. And then you have fearlessness. Turn your warrior into a warrior. So yeah, you guys, the sense that I'm getting is that uh, the dynamic between you is one of union. It is the dynamic of I don't want to say two halves of the same whole because that can imply codependency. And I certainly don't mean that, but there's unity. Okay. Unity. And again, this is, um, um, a reiteration of the idea that we already had with so much stability being in that first row of cards for his, for him. Sorry about his personality. So any fear, fear, it's just not there. There's this sense that again, there's safety in this relationship. So when, when you have a concern, he has a concern. When he has a need, you have that same need. It's like, it's, it's the idea of team. That's what I want to say. Instead of two halves of a whole, the idea of team, that you are a unit, that you are one together. That is the dynamic. And it's not that either one of you loses your sense of self. 
and becomes an extension of the other. It's more along the lines of we are in this together. We are one together. I love you as much as I love me. See the self-love card? You can only love others as much as you love yourself. You love, I love me and I love you. And for him, it's I love me and I love, it's the same freaking phrase. I don't know why I felt the need to repeat that, but you get what I'm saying. It is when I take care of you, I'm taking care of me is the feeling. When I take care of me, I'm taking care of you is the feeling. I hope I've said that. I know it got a little esoteric there, but I hope I've said that in a way that, uh, that makes sense to you. And then the final card you guys have is, uh, the divine influence. The divine masculine influence for him is life force energy, right? Sorry, let me rephrase. The influence is Kane and not Kanye. For those of you who are like, what? Kanye West? Uh, uh-uh. uh. As much as he thinks he's a little god, he is not divine. It's Kane. <laughs> and uh, the key word here is life force energy. So this is a person who does live life. He lives life fully. And the reason why he is able to do that, mm, I should say that better. So what I was going to say is the reason why he's able to live life fully is because he has the means to do so. And while that is true, it is also possible that he has the means to do so because he chose to live life fully fully. Mm, I can't say it better than that. (laughs) All right, you guys, I hope you found this uh, reading today helpful. It is definitely the largest spread I have done here on the YouTube videos on the channel. So uh, hopefully people click on it and watch it. Um, In the meantime, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful uh, rest of your weekend, and I will see you in my next one. You guys, I offer relationship readings on my Etsy shop. So if you have an interest in getting a love and relationship reading or a narcissistic relationship reading for any of you who have that situation going on in your life, please check out the links below. It'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, for the narcissistic relationship reading, if you use discount code NARC1, you will get 15% off your first order. Hey, group three, welcome to your reading. So we are going to be finding out some details about the guy who is looking for you. To do that, I'm going to answer three questions. And to get those answers, I will be using, uh, did I say three questions? I meant six questions. If I said three, forgive me. I meant six questions. Uh, And so we will be using several decks for that. Uh, Because of this, I am about to start pulling your cards. If you don't want to watch me assemble the piles, feel free to use the timestamps below to go directly to the interpretation of your cards. However, if you are interested in seeing me pull the cards, the questions that I'm going to be asking are, we're going to find out about the personality type of the guy who's looking for you. We're going to find out about his career and finances. We're going to find out about his relationship with his family We're going to look into what kind of a first date he might suggest that you guys go on together. We're going to look at the character trait that he uh, brings out in you. Now, this might be a character trait that you already have and it gets magnified or amplified in your connection to him. Or it could be one that you haven't had before, but it gets uh, developed during the time that you guys have your relationship together. That sounds so ominous as though I'm saying, oh, it's not going to last. I don't know. Uh, You guys might be together forever, but your connection to him might amplify that character trait that you already have is what I was trying to say. Okay. um, (laughs) We are going to also take a look at when you guys might meet one another. And uh, the energy between the two of you, what's going to be the dynamic of the relationship? And then finally, we're going to take a look at his divine masculine influences. So again, uh, similar to what I was saying in terms of the character trait that gets amplified in you, these divine masculine influences, they may be conscious or unconscious for him. Okay, so it could be that he knows about the God or guardian or spirit guide that these character traits are connected to and actively seeks to embody them. Or it could be that he just happens to have those same character traits that that God or guardian or spirit guide is known for. Okay. Um, Alrighty. That is whew, a mouthful. It's a lot. So let's start pulling your cards. 
We're going to start with looking at the personality type of the guy who is looking for group three. What can we find out about his personality type, please? I saw you jump. I saw you jump. Personality type for the guy who is looking for group three. Can I have some information, please, to share with them? Thank you. Information, please, around the personality type of group three. Sorry, the guy looking for group three. Information, please, about the personality type of the guy who is looking for the people who chose this group. Lovely. All right. May I have some information now, please, around his career and finances? What can I share with the people who chose this group about the career and finances of the guy who is looking for them? Career and finances of, there you are, the guy who is looking for group three. We're going to take both of these because they were trying to come out together. The guy who is looking for those who chose group three. What can you tell me? Oh, thank you. What can I tell them, I should say, about his career finances? So you guys got two cards for position four there as well. Okay, his family. What's his relationship with his family like? Have these two together for position one. The relationship between the guy looking for them and his family. What is his relationship? Oh, oh, wow. With his family like. Gotcha. All right. Well, that is, <laughs> it looks like a mess, but trust me, I I know what this is. I mean, I'm not saying I know because I haven't flipped the cards yet, but anyway, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and move on to the next question. And that is what, uh, what's the first date that he might suggest that they go on together? What first date might the guy who is looking for them suggest that they do together? What? first date might he suggest what first date might he oh we got sun so since you've already seen it I'll let it stay up what first date might he suggest oh thank you what first date oh and then we got these two together and since they're already showing we'll just let them stay Okay, next we're going to take a look at the character trait that he brings out or magnifies in you. What character trait does the guy who is looking for you bring out in you? This is the one. Thank you. Next we're going to take a look at when you guys might meet. When will you meet? Can we have an idea, please, of when they will meet? When will you meet? Thank you. Now we're going to look at the energy between you. What's the dynamic of your relationship with one another? Oh, okay. This one said me, me, pick me. <laughs> and then finally, we are looking at his divine masculine influences. What are his divine masculine influences? What are his divine masculine influences, please? Oh, thank you. All right, group three, let's get started because as you can see here, we have a lot to cover. So starting with his personality type, we have five of swords, we have three of pentacles. We have seven of swords. Very, very interesting. And we have the seven of wands. Okay, so a couple of things have come up right away. The first being clearly that we have uh, two seven cards and uh, one, you know, uh, seven of wands and the other being seven of swords. And then we also have two swords cards here. Now, 
I'm getting from this, and of course, we also have three of pentacles. You have, um, the guy that is looking for you is someone who works diligently to control his mind. It doesn't come as easily for him as it does for some, okay? Um, I get that he is sometimes easily affected by uh, negative things said to him about him uh, from others by others when others say negative things about him it's it's not so easy for him to let it just roll off his back sometimes his mind plays tricks on him and leads him to believe people are saying or thinking negative things about him when they are not so what we have here is a person who uh does struggle some with self-esteem and because of that there is um conflict inside of him um, between wanting to be able to be in harmonious relationships, harmonious situations, um, but, but being influenced by what comes his way. Do you know the phrase hair, hair trigger? You know, there are, it's not necessarily that he flies off the handle, but he's he's vigilant to insult. That's the best way to put it, okay? Um, this might sometimes make him snappy himself because of feeling uh, um, like he has to defend himself and at the same time feeling as though he might not be equipped to do that. I'm getting that this is possibly because there was a lot of conflict in his past and there has not yet been... Uh, peace made around that conflict. So while his intention is to function better than that, to function in, like I said earlier, a more hom harmonious way with people, uh, things can oftentimes with him, like in new work situations, sometimes even in his social groups, sometimes I have to say, I have to tell you the truth, even his romantic life uh, can start off looking great, but because he is sensitive to insult, there can be... Um, uh, arguments or conflicts or, uh, uncomfortable conversations that would not be the case around that same subject with a different person of a different personality type. Uh, but know that he is not a bad person and he is not someone who, um, is like walking around with his chest sticking out, trying to be like, I'm Mr. Alpha male and I'm going to fight everybody that comes along. It's not that at all. It's just that there are some unhealed hurts inside of him. And so certain things will, um, will trigger him to, to reactionary, uh, responses. And again, sometimes these are not real slights. A, you know, a lot of times these are not real slights, but his mind is playing tricks on him. I'm getting that he, well, we'll talk about the family in, in a little bit, um, but I'm getting the sense that what's going on there with him is not just from what his adult experiences have been, that he's only this way because of things that have happened since he was an adult, but um, I'm getting the sense that he might have had um, an injury, an emotional or psychological injury in his past, uh, sorry, in his childhood that has developed into the personality type that he is today and, and makes him, um, unfortunately very ready for battle, despite being someone who would prefer not to battle. He doesn't want to be in fights. He doesn't want to have conflicts. He wants to be, again, harmonious with people. He just doesn't have the skills yet. He doesn't have the tools yet. He doesn't know how to be yet who he wants to be, but he does hold the ideal of being that person. So this is the guy who is looking for you. This is not a reading around who you're going to end up with. You get to decide whether or not this is an energy that you want to entertain. You get to decide whether or not this is a person that you can have the patience and tolerance for. For some of you, it might prove to be a very rewarding thing to... Um, be involved with someone who's got this much, shall we call it, 
energy <laughs> uh, for debate. <laughs> that's that's a nice way to put it, right? Because uh, for some of you, it might be a turn on to constantly be like to have a volatile relationship. Some people like that kind of thing. Um, but for some of you, you might, you know, respectfully pass and go in a different direction. It just depends on what works for you. Okay. Uh, along with that, just so you know, along with that, it's not just that he's little Mr. Troubled in life. Not at all, because his sense of injustice makes him an advocate for those who are, um, who he feels are having, or who, who, who he feels are being treated unjustly. So he might be someone who enjoys going to, uh, being a part of causes. He might volunteer for, uh, political candidates that he, who he believes in their cause. He might, uh, go to protests against, um, Again, social or legal injustices. He might follow. I'm getting a sense that he might be someone who, like, his preferred way to unwind is to read articles around, um, uh, cases or trials or, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Instances isn't strong enough a word, but, you know, whatever's in the news, current events, current events that have to do with a wrong that needs to be righted. OK, so this this fighter energy that's inside of him, it's not just it, he it's not just that he has to you know, come to fisticuffs with people because he's so sensitive and things treat him badly. But because of how he processes and why he processes that way, he also um, is actively vocal about injustices towards others, particularly those who are deemed, uh, who actually are not just deemed, but who actually are less fortunate in our world, not just our society. So you could just as easily hear him talk about the plight of the homeless in uh, Los Angeles, as well as hear him talk about people in what we used to call third world countries, but are now considered developing countries, even if they're not freaking developing at all. Um, he might, you might hear him, you know, rant about that too. So conversation with him is never boring. I can tell you that conversation with him is never boring for you or for anyone else that is around. Okay. Uh, in terms of his career in finances, we got nine of cups. We got nine of wands. We have the queen of swords and the magician together. Very, very interesting. And we got Queen of Pentacles, so two queens, and um, the Three of Swords together. Okay. Nine of Cups, Nine of Wands. What's very interesting about that is Nine of Cups and Nine of Wands are like opposite energies. So they're both nines. And look at this. We've got sevens back to back up here. And now we have nines back to back here. Career and finances. So king of, oh, sorry, uh, nine of cups, nine of wands. And then we have queen of swords and the magician. And then we have queen of pentacles and the three of swords. Guys, I'm getting, don't, I, Sorry, uh, Queen of Pentacles and the Three of Swords. I'm getting a sense that he might work in a legal profession, but not necessarily in the most lucrative way. Let me see if I can say that better. What's coming to me is... So like, you know, defense lawyers, because oftentimes they... Um, private, private defense lawyers oftentimes they represent like people with shall we say questionable business practices or outright criminal uh <laughs> like like high level criminals they make a lot of money um i'm getting here that he might actually be a prosecutor the opposite of that okay and that while he enjoys his work, it does come with its share of pain, heartache, disappointment, because he doesn't always get 
to uh he doesn't always win like because nobody always wins and he's just got such a sense of fairness versus unfairness fairness justice versus uh things being unjust in yeah unjust that um that this does cause some pain i'm getting that he is fueled to this kind of work because of his history it's like there's a there's a wrong in his past that didn't get righted and so now he tries to right wrongs for others he is a champion for others he enjoys being a prosecutor because of the fact that it it allows him like i said get justice for other people to, to right wrongs. If he's not in the legal profession, there is some aspect of his work that, um, where he is frontline for people who need, who need protection, people who need, um, what's the word I'm looking for? coverage i i feel very strongly that legal system has to do with it people who can't do for themselves so what we have here is we got like the queen of swords but we got it covering the magician and they came out together the magician is a very powerful um card it's it's the the um Refle reflection is not the word I'm looking for. Representation. It's the representation of someone who has the ability to do for themselves, to create what they want, to make things happen. And I'm getting that the guy who's looking for you, he functions in that capacity on behalf of people who don't have that ability themselves. He gets paid well enough. So, you know, what I said earlier about it not being the most lucrative what i mean specifically is like he's not going to make millions from it okay but he's also not destitute he's also not poor but um and 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 that does bring for him some sense of you know there's a a t a, l a teeny teeny little bit of regret around the job choice only teeny though, because I'm getting mostly it's a it's a contented. He's content in that position because he believes in the work that he's doing and he wants to do this work. He wants to do it because of what it makes him feel like and because of the effect it has on other people's lives. But there is I'm getting some regret around that there is a cap to his earnings because of it. Um, and. And so he makes enough to support himself. Don't, this is not a person that you're going to have to like support him if y'all got to the point of marrying one another, um, or that he doesn't have the funds to take you out or anything like that. And the money he does get, he's very good with. He might, you know, invest it well, but he's not investing towards mega growth. He's investing towards, um, financial security and old age so it would be you know mutual fund kind of investment as opposed to let me take a risk on crypto kind of thing okay but yeah i'm getting very much the sense of it being you know again this fighter nature of his is a uh, part of the work he does and um he he might actually be a judge okay he might actually if he I'm mostly getting prosecutor, but with the potential of judge. So it might be he he could be a judge or again, someone who makes judgments on behalf of others. So, you know, for it, he could be a loan officer that's around the same energy, you know, where he looks at situations and makes decisions. He could also be like the president or head of development for an organization that helps people in need get funding that they need for either a new business venture or uh, to keep their homes. Uh, he might work in refinance. There's something around using his um, mind in order to help the little guy, help the person that can't help themselves. Uh, but <coughs> excuse me. It's also tied to something that has to do with legalities, whether it's the law itself or like very thick legal documents around real estate or something like that. But definitely it's in a position where 
he, he wears a suit to work. <laughs> and I know that could be like so many different jobs, but, uh, and I'm getting like the sense of grayness as in the color gray. Um, so there's something, it's very serious work. It's very serious work. And some people's lives would suffer greatly without people like him to do the kind of work that he does. Okay. And again, I'm getting a, very strongly the sense around, uh, justice for others or, um, <clears throat> empowerment of others doing for others what they can't do for themselves and please excuse me i just realized how loud that was in your ear sorry about that guys there was just so much dryness in my throat okay so in terms of his relationship with his family we got eight of pentacles with four of wands we got the emperor and we got the strength card well look at this we got two major arcana I definitely get here that there's a family business. I'm getting that it's a very old established family business, uh, that there was an expectation that he would go into this family business as well. And oh, look at this, we have fours back to back. So up here we have sevens back to back, here we have nines back to back, and here we have fours back to back. Oh shoot, and this row has two eights in it as well. And two fours equals eight. Okay, so four is security in the tarot. And um, so we definitely, I definitely have a sense here of the family unit being secure. Uh, his parents are not divorced. They are still together. Or if they are not, it's because one of them has passed on. Possibly both. I'm not getting the sense that it's both though. I'm getting the feeling that his father is definitely still alive and very, very vocal about his unfortunately disappointment in his son. So his father worked very hard um, at the work that he does for the business that he has. It may be multi-generational, this business. So not just that the father started it, but maybe his father before him had this same business. And so the expectation was that this guy who's looking for you would do this job too. The father has a sense of obligation to the family business. So um, getting a sense that there was a falling out there around the fact that the guy who's looking for you, his father did not want to necessarily go into this line of work, but he did it out of a sense of obligation to the family and to uh, obligation to his own father and also to carry on the trade of the family keeping the the skills going in this family you know they're known for it they're they're great at it they have again multi-generational customers like such and such who's their customer now say the name is sarah sarah who's their customer now well sarah's dad also was their customer or sarah's mom you know um that this the business is is very 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 strong the um and very established, very secure. And so the father didn't dream. The father of the guy who's looking for you didn't like, he might've had dreams, but he didn't follow those. He didn't do what he felt called to do. He didn't choose against working for this family because he knew that if he did not carry on the family legacy, that this business would end, okay? And so he had the same expectation for the guy who's looking for you. But the uh, guy who was looking for you, he made a different choice. Now, I'm getting that there's very strong possibility that he made that other choice because of not feeling that same sense of obligation because of past hurts from within that family. It is very possible that his father was not there for him in a way that he needed. His father, I think, also was very hard on him, uh, had very, very high expectations and could sometimes be cruel in the way he spoke to him. Uh, part of this has to do with um, definitely the stresses of being head of the family. In, in his eyes, he was head of the family, as well as stresses around um, keeping this business together, particularly when it wasn't his dream to, to run this family business. Uh, this business has stayed in place even through the recession of 2008, even through what we saw happen to a lot of uh, businesses during the coronavirus. So be, so the, the amount of personal strength and control and discipline that it takes for that, there is um, just 
a, the, the sense of obligation, what's missing from the father of the guy who's looking for you is a sense of pride that he was able to do this and that he chose to do that, do it. There is some resentment there and definitely some resentment towards his son. I I'm getting, I feel that there are some very old hurts here because of arguments that have been going on since the guy who was looking for you was 18. Um, he didn't want this and he felt confident saying, I don't want this. This is not for me. And part of why he felt confident saying that is because of the influence he had in his mother. She was, she's a very strong woman. She's got very great inner strength and that inner strength makes her a good partner for, uh, this father that the guy who was looking for you had, but also has, 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 uh, but also, uh, makes her a good mother to her children. I am getting the sense that the guy who's looking for you has other siblings. Um, getting that some of those siblings are working this family business along with the father. Um, and yet that's still not enough for him. He still, it's like he enjoys being dissatisfied with his son. Um, and it's mostly because he's mad at himself for not following his own path, but continuing his own dad's business or, or mom's business. Um, but his, the, the mother of the guy who's looking for you, she is strong. She is, she's got a great inner strength. She's very loving, very caring. She sets a very good example for him and his siblings. He, she allows them the, um, I don't want to say the space to be themselves because I do feel like she might be particularly in front of the father an advocate for what he's wanting, but behind closed doors in secret conversations, she says, you know, you know how your father is, but you know, if you really feel like you need to do something different, you should do that. It, this makes her um, strong in that she's holding the family together. Okay. Um, but it adds to the conflict of the family because the children, they, there, there isn't a sense of being, I don't want to say unconditionally loved, but I, I do want to say, let me say how I want to say it, totally accepted for who they are and the choices they make or what they really want. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick look at the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, blah, 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 blah. What are they? The first day. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought for a second. The first date suggestions he might come up with for you guys. So uh, I am going to move these up some so that I have a little bit more space to work with. And if you guys happen to hear a bunch of noise all of a sudden, it's because my own significant other just came home and the door between us is open and he's in the kitchen probably making his dinner because I didn't cook. Okay. Um <laughs> So uh, the cards that you guys got, let me give them to you in the order you got them. So you got the Fool card, which is a major arcana. You got the Sun card, which is also a major arcana. You got Ten of Cups. And then you got, oh, wait, if I recall correctly, yeah, these two came together. Okay. Uh, Knight of Pentacles and the Hermit came together along uh, in the fourth position there. So we have the Fool the sun, the ten of cups, the knight of pentacles. Okay, so right off, I'm getting the, um, it's going to be something fun, um, something where there's a little bit of risk involved. Uh, so maybe like, I don't know if this is a thing people still do, but this is the example that comes to mind, like bungee jumping or... Um, it's something where it's it's usually done by people with an adventurous spirit. However, it's something that a lot of people do. I am not getting the sense around because we have Hermit and we have Hermit in reverse. So it's very joyous. I'm getting the sense that this is like something people do with their families, like the whole family might go to do it. So definitely, probably not bungee jumping because most people don't take their kids bungee jump. Oh, I got it. Yes, amusement park. He is taking you to an amusement park, or at least that's what he's going to suggest. So um, something like if you live in like California, where I live, right? It could be Disneyland. If you're in Florida, Disney World. If you're in Georgia, Six Flags. Um, or whatever amusement park is near where you live, if there isn't a full on big, I mean, and so the, the feeling that I was getting around, um, 
bungee jumping roller coasters Durr. so <laughs> so yeah it's gonna be such a joyful um experience full of people it's gonna be a lot of people there uh you guys are gonna have long waits and lines i'm getting that with your knight of cuts card here there will be long lines so i'm feeling like it's going to be a big amusement park as opposed to like just like putt putt right <laughs> and then again uh roller coaster so be prepared for going to an amusement park if that is something you enjoy if it is not be sure to tell him because you don't want to start the first date off um I'm sorry, start the relationship if it turns into one off with a, a first date that you don't enjoy. Okay, uh, next we're going to take a look at the character trait that he brings out in you. And we have hidden in plain sight. Look at that, hidden in plain sight. So I feel like... The character trait that he brings out in you, it feels like it's going to be something around honesty, vulnerability, truthfulness of who you are. I'm getting that he has the ability to see aspects of you that other people miss. And it's because they're not pay pay paying as close attention. And so you might be, might be someone who operates in shadow a lot. You might be secretive. You might keep certain things to yourself for fear of not being accepted or uh, uh, either because you've been harshly judged in the past or because um, even if you haven't been harshly judged, you know that certain things about you aren't necessarily societally acceptable or accepted but they are you. They are part of who you are. You might have a tendency of changing who you are to fit whoever you're around or whatever situation you feel in. And what he, uh, being involved with him does is bring out in you, uh, the need to no longer do that. I didn't say that, right? Let me see if I can say it better. Removing from you the need to do that. There is, he sees all side of you. Not because he's like necessarily psychic. I mean, he could be, but I think there's something about him. Maybe because he, his own wounds show, you allow yourself to not be perfect with him. And that way he sees all sides of you as well. And in so doing, because he can see all sides of you and accept them, that gives you more of a um, license to be your full self and not just with him, but with others as well. Um, I'm getting unfolding. The word unfolding keeps coming uh, to me. So the chameleon nature won't be as required. Um, and, and when you do it, Going forward, it'll be more out of because you can and out of a sense of fun, right? And then for some of you, um, yeah, no, that's what I'm getting from most of you, but, um, for most of you, but for some of you, it's not that you have the need to hide or the, uh, or that you operate in shadow. You might already be someone who is fully yourself in front of people and, uh, you might uh, change aspects of yourself out of the sense of game. Um, you might actually be someone who enjoys tricking other people. I'm not saying that you are, but some of you who, who chose this pile today, that might be a reality for you. Um, and maybe a fun little thing that you guys do together is, uh, you know, know the truth about a situation or whatever when dealing with other people and, and letting that be your secret between the two of you that others don't necessarily, uh, pick up on. Okay. Uh, in terms of when you guys might meet, we are looking at full moon in Scorpio. So it might be during a full moon during Scorpio season. Scorpio season is later this year. So that gives you several months to prepare yourself for meeting this guy who's looking for you. And it also gives him several months to prepare uh, to meet you. Or it may catch you both off guard and just be a fun little surprise. But Scorpio season is October 23rd to November 21st, roughly. So um, yeah, the fall, the fall. And what a perfect time to go to an amusement park, right? Is the fall. 
Very nice. The energy between you, the dynamic of your relationship, we have all things work best in con in conjunction with all things. So again, I feel like this is a, um, what do you call it? A um, reinforcement. That's not the word I need. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? All things work best in conjunction with all things. It is a not, ref not reinforcement, not ref uh, not reinforcement or repetition, but it's a confirmation, confirmation of the hidden in plain sight card, right? There's just this sense of all of me. In fact, the song All of Me, uh, made popular by Frank Sinatra, has been playing in my head since I got this card and it got even louder when we got this card. All things work best in conjunction with all things. And what this speaks to is not feeling the need to hide anything about yourself from others. Uh, sorry, from each other, from each other specifically, that the dynamic between you is one of full acceptance of one another. And boy, does this boy need that, right? He, he's he been longing for someone to accept him on that level. And uh, here you come with the ability to do that. And you might have been craving or needing that as well in your life. And here he comes with the ability to give that to you. And that in and of itself is such a beautiful thing that uh, you guys bring out in each other the the ability to exist, the right to exist. You are real. You are real. Okay. And then finally, the divine influences that uh, he has. We have Ra. Share your gift. So Ra is the sun god of Egypt. And uh, the key word here is share your gift. And I definitely feel like this is, again, a confirmation of what we saw when we talked about the kind of work that he does. He has the ability to so he uses it on behalf of those who don't have the ability to. He shares his gifts of, um, it could be specific skills, specific knowledge, anything, anything at all. Whatever his gifts are, he uses it on behalf of others. And so we saw that in talking about his career and finances, but I feel like this also just might be how he goes through life. This, this hair trigger we talked about at the top, this feeling of hurt, it comes with compassion, right? It comes with compassion for others. And, um, and, and, it, and it, you know, it might not be the most empathetic compassion where he has the ability to put his himself in other people's shoes. It might be projection a lot of the time. He might be claiming someone is being done wrong when they actually aren't, or they may be fine with how things are, but he's got this warrior spirit, this justice spirit that makes him, uh, you know, be there for people, whether they need him to be there for them or not. Okay, group three, that is what I have for you today. Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. You guys, I offer relationship readings on my Etsy shop. So if you have an interest in getting a love and relationship reading or a narcissistic relationship reading for any of you who have that situation going on in your life, please check out the links below. It'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, for the narcissistic relationship reading, if you use discount code NARC1, you will get 15% off your first order.